Hi, welcome to Dreamforce. Um, my name is Ruben. Uh, I've been work, I've, I used to work in the enterprise API team. I've been responsible for the bulk API v2. Uh, along with me is Josh. He's a senior dev on the team. And he'll be responsible for quite a bit of the development going forward. Uh, in the crowd also, we have Kevin somewhere. He's the product owner. Uh, he will be here if you have any questions. I don't know if he's here. OK, never mind. Moving on. All right, so that's us. You can reach me on Twitter at Ruben Connell um, and Josh at Syndic. All right, uh, being Salesforce, we have to put on these forward-looking statements. It really says, if you're making any purchasing decisions, please make them based on features that are currently available in the product rather than something that we may talk about which may come in the future. OK, so I want, today I want to talk about why did we need to create a new bulk API. We already have an existing bulk API. It does its job just fine. But wh why did we need to do it? I'll talk about how it works internally for both bulk API v1 and bulk API v2. And we'll end up with a couple of demos. All right, so the, the primary driving reason for us to write a new version of bulk API was we wanted to simplify it. Bulk API v1, one of the biggest things when you use Bulk API v1 is you, talk, you think about, oh, I've got to create a batch, which is either 10 MB or 10,000 records. Bulk API v2, you don't do any of that. You just say, hey, this is my file. You give it to Salesforce, and we take care of processing. When you think of it, batches is really a load management concept for us. And it did not make any sense for us to kind of give it out to you and you know, delegate, to, delegate it to our customers to handle the load balancing for us. The second thing, we wanted to simplify limits. Uh, when you think of bulk API, there are a lot of limits. You've got limits on the file size. You've got limits on the number of records. Uh, you've got limits on the record size. In V2, we wanted to simplify it. You really have just two limits. One is the max file size you can upload. That's around 100 MB. And the second limit is the number of records you can process daily. So you don't have batch limits. We say you can process 100 million records every 24 hours. So we just simplify that a lot. Um, furthermore, if you, if, you know, if you use Bulk API before, it's slightly different from the existing REST APIs. And if, you, if, you're at, if at your workplace you had a toolkit that spoke to Salesforce REST APIs, you'd have to tweak it a little bit to work with Bulk API, because Bulk the V1 was not completely RESTful. We made it a point when we wrote Bulk V2 that it is going to be built of the standard REST, REST endpoint. So it will behave exactly like the standard Salesforce REST APIs. Um, the other, the, finally, the, one of the enhancements that we did with Bulk V2 is that you can actually query your job history in an org through uh, one of the endpoints that we provide. All right, so let's take a look at a little more detail in, as to what is really different between V1 and V2. So first, V1 supports create, update, delete, and query. V2 supports only create, update, and delete. We don't have query yet. It may come out in the future. Um, V1, you've got to prepare batches. V2, there is no batches. You just get a file. You, upload, you just mark it upload complete, and you're done. Uh, it's built off a custom REST framework. V1 is. V2 is built on the standard REST framework, so it makes it easier for you to use with the existing toolkits. Uh, Bulk API v1 is based on number of metering is based on number of batches. Now that is not very really transparent because if you got a large record, that means your file size becomes bigger. That means you can upload fewer batches. Then you call up support and say, hey, I need to add get more batches, uh, increase that limit. But whereas with v2, you don't do that. You say, hey, I want to upload 100 million records. You upload 100 million records and you're done. Uh, Bulk API v1 has got the ability to process both in serial and parallel. For now, Bulk API v2 processes only parallel. We don't have serial pro batch processing. All right, so uh, I'm going to talk about how Bulk API v1 works internally. This is a slide. Uh, it's there for your reference, but then I'm going to kind of go to the animation uh, so that you actually get to see what's happening instead of reading this text out to you. It's, I think it's a lot better that way. All right, so in Bulk API v1, you got your data set. You, when you, what you do next is you create your files on your local machine. You create like n number of files. You create every batch. And as you create every batch, we start processing it. And then you've got a job checker that goes on pinging every batch. Like, is it done yet? Is it done yet? At some point, we get done, hopefully. Next. The clicker stops working. All right, there you go. And once it's complete, you can download your results. 
by kind of going to the job ID, batch ID, results, and you download it. The thing with bulk v1 is that when you download your file, you get you know, the entire result set. That is both the successes and errors together. Now, the problem is that if you, if you have like 100 million records and you're kind of trying to want to find a few records that actually errored out, you have to kind of go searching through the entire record set. In v2, we have simplified that as well. But I'll show you as we kind of get to that point. <laughs> Complete. And we're done. OK. Did I skip over something here? No. Oh, sorry. And this clicker. Skip forward. All right. Uh, finally, bulk API v2 batching. This is what we do for bulk API v2 batching. Uh, again, this is a reference slide. It'll be there on the deck. But I'll go to the animation right away so that you can see what's happening. Um, okay, when you're done taking pictures, I don't know. Right. So, um, all right. So with v2 batching, you just have your data set. It's going to be a plain text CSV file. You just upload it to us. That's all you do. You just create a job. You upload a batch CSV file. Then we have a special batch construction bit of code that actually looks at a file, creates a number of batches based on how our system is doing, and we process it. We get some information, and okay. And once once we finish processing those batches, we go and create more batches from the existing set of files till we have processed your entire file. And at this point, you're only you all you have is a job ID. You don't have to look at the individual batches because with bulk v2, you can just query the job ID instead of having to look at the state of individual batches. Once the job is complete, your results are ready. You should you're good to go. All right, so uh, let's look at the demo. We've got two demos for you today. Uh, one. All right, does that work? There All right, go. perfect. So what, what you have on screen is a very simple Python app. On your left is, uh, it's, it's really got two panes. On your left is a pane that describes the steps required to create uh, and upload content for a bulk v1 job and create and upload content for a bulk v2 job. So uh, on your left is v1, on your right is v2. Authenticating step is very simple. We use standard OAuth, and we authenticate it. Um, but what's interesting is when we come to create a job. So if we click on create a job, create job. Yeah. All right, so if you look at that, you see that to create a job in bulk v1, we do a post to services async job. But whereas for v2, you do a post against services data v40 jobs ingest. Now that's creating a job on the standard Salesforce REST endpoint. Um, once you create a job, that's pretty straightforward. The important thing when you create a job in v2 is that you get back a content URL. You don't upload a batch. So your job body contains a content URL against which you'll be executing a put. Now to add content, in v1, what you would usually do is your code will iterate over all the records in a file, uh, create individual batches, and upload them. In v2, uh, when you click Add Content, you simply put the file, you mark the job upload complete, and you're done. It, and you just wait for the job to get done. And finally, you close the job in v1. v2, there is no such step. Uh, so when Josh runs this demo, um, uh, you should see it. Uh, doing, it authenticates. It creates a job. It adds content, and you're done. And what you see is that I mean, the actual process of uploading content is slightly faster in, in v2. But there is no, there's no much difference in the actual processing speed. So far, we wanted to maintain parity. But over time, we'll work on optimizing the speed of v2 ingest. For now, it's just we wanted to maintain basic parity with v1. All right, so uh, that is it. If you log into our org, you can see that those jobs are created. Now, that's a very high level overview. Now, let's kind of take a step deeper and see what the actual requests look like. All right, so what you have on screen is Emacs. It does everything. And what I've got here is a very simple um, REST client. And each of these are actual requests. And I'm going to be executing this request against the server. When we did the dry run of this demo, it looks like I'm opening a file. I'm just not. It's actually hitting the server, and I'm getting a response back. So the people at the dry run said, hey, you know what? Make, that, make clear that this is actually hitting the server. It's not. It's not opening a file and showing you the output. So. <clears throat> In this case, uh, the first thing is that I want to show you all the jobs that are in the set in the in the in the org. So I can just execute a get against v41 jobs oh. ingest. Uh, just hit get again. Come on. There. Oh, there you go. And once once you do that, you see that it's all the jobs, and you can see it's got a job ID, it's got operations, it's got accounts, it's got the account ID, the type of job. Et cetera, et cetera, and you go on. So that's how you get all the jobs in the system. You can query any job. You can filter by jobs. If you look at the documentation, we allow you to give specify parameters by which you can filter the jobs in your system, in your org. 
uh, if you scroll down, you want to copy the job. Uh, you want, no, next thing, we create a job. So to create a job, we are executing a post. And if you look at a body, a body is very simple. It just says, uh, it's just an account insert. So it's pretty straightforward. You, um, we just created a job. And if you look at the job body, it contains a job ID. And it contains, oh, it's got a pointer? Uh, the okay. job ID. Oh, it's got a job ID. And it's got a content URL. Now, the content URL is the place against which you put your content. So uh, once Josh has pasted the job ID there, we are good to go. So that's your job ID set. Uh, what we do here is that we are uploading this content against the job that we have created. It's a very simple operation. It's a put, text CSV uh, with your fields. And you just say, hey, and the response that you get back is a 201 created. So you actually created content on Salesforce. Now, that is done. Now, with V1, the minute you uploaded a batch, it will start processing. But with V2, we need you to mark the job upload complete. The reason we want this is because in the future, we want to support upload resumption. We want to be able to support much larger files. At this point, we have a file size of 125 MB. But over time, we want it to become maybe 100 MB, maybe a GB, maybe more. right? So at this point, you, and then in that case, you might have you know, your connection timeouts or whatever else. But with, by marking it upload complete, it just make, lets us know that your upload is done. So what Josh is going to do is he marks it upload complete, which he's done. Um, and it says it's 200. Now, to get the res now let's, let's look at the status of the job. So you probably want to scroll up, Josh. Uh, there we go. Uh, right there. So all right, we look at the status of the job. And the job says it's complete, so we're good to go. That means our results are ready. So when you, scroll when you look at down, now let's get our results. Now, this is, which is, this is something that's very different from bulk v1. So can you get the results? So in V1, what would happen is you just get the job ID and whether it's created. But in V2, you get the entire record that you passed up to you. The reason being that at any point, uh, one thing with V2 is that we don't guarantee the ordering of records as the way you upload it to us, because we want to be able to have the opportunity to optimize the ingest. In this case, uh, what you notice is that I only have the odd numbered records out there and not the even numbered records. That's because I put a trigger so that you could download the failed results. Now, if you download, and the endpoints are pretty um, uh, intuitive in the sense that you go to job ID slash successful results, and you get all your successful results. You go to job ID slash failed results, and you get all your failed results. In this, you contain your ID, the error that was failed, and the rest of your record. So you know out of like hundreds of thousands of records, if something failed, you know exactly what failed, and you don't have to kind of go searching through all your like tons of records, because we know when it failed and the reason why it failed. What you can do then is you can just kind of strip out the first two columns, fix the records, and re-upload them. Let me show you another way to create a job. Now, up till now, I showed you a very simple way you could do a post. Now, say suppose you got a very small batch, which is maybe like a 10 MB batch. It's really small now. In this case, what do you do? You can create a multi-part request. The thing with creating multi-part requests is that you don't need to create a job. You can create a job, create a batch, and a market upload all in one request. What you can do is you create a job by creating a multi-part form data uh, content type. What that does is that tells us that, hey, you, we want to be able to create a job and post the content at the same time. And what I've done here is that I've specified the boundary of every sub-body boundary. So if you look at, uh, it's, it's demarked by uh, hyphen hyphen boundary. Yeah. So uh, the next important header in this is really the content type and the content disposition header. The content disposition header tells us what is this body. So in this case, it says the, the name of this particular body is job. So we are saying that this is the job body. Um, the second body says its uh, content type is, con is, is content. So it tells us that this is content. So when Josh executes this, what happens is that he gets it's a job that's created. It's all upload. Comes. So if you've got like a small set of records that you don't want to kind of create like three records, you can just do it all in one record using this. And if you look at the job ID, you can just copy that, paste it into the job ID uh, place. All right, once that's done, you can check the status of the job ID. So I'm guessing it's done by now. But uh, And you see it's successfully completed. It inserted all the records, all the even number records. So yeah, and then one last thing. With v1, we did not let you delete your jobs. But with v2, we let you delete your job. So this works specifically for v2 if you want to clean up your org after you're done. You can just execute a delete against job ID, and it cleans out the job and the created request and everything else. But that doesn't mean that it reduces your request count. It just deletes that job. So uh, that is what it is. One caveat I have to mention when you're using v2 is that if you know that your org is going to have an org migration, please do not use v2 until your org migration is complete. That is because our underlying file storage does not replicate it to the new instance. Um, so once, it's complete, once, once your org migration is complete, that's when you can use v2 again. So, 
yeah, I think that's all we have for our demos and our talk. So if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them, or you can meet me there, or Kevin's at the back. So. Yeah. Yes. Sorry? Uh, that would duplicate entries in the same batch. Now, would. I have not. Okay. I'm not. Okay. I'm not run that. Run into that. No. So, is that something that you see because of like uh, dedupe in your org? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, we we have not changed that behavior. So if it works in V1, it will work exactly like that in V2. Okay. <laughs> we have not changed that. We have maintained parity with the V1 so that it's comfortable enough. If you're kind of trying to migrate, you know it's like an expected pattern. So that's the reason why we're trying to maintain this parity. So, so sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. So you can mark the job aborted. You can patch a job with a job ID aborted. It'll stop processing everything right away. You you will be still be able to download your results and get everything that's processed. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's done. Uh, I know. So that we well, we we have we have a bug fix in place. It should go out after Dreamforce. We. Can, I'm sorry, you're, you're? Are you? OK, OK, you know, that's fine. We'll, I'll talk to you later. Yes, uh, the reason is like the, the engine that we used to kind of split up our files was written specifically for CSV. We want to kind of break it apart and make it more generic. That's, uh, and over time, we'll add more content types as we go along. So this, you can upload millions of records. Composite API, you'd use up your API calls within like maybe half an hour. So that's the difference. I'm, just, I'm sorry, we can't, I can't, hear we can't hear you. Size of the CSV file? Uh, right now, it's around 125 MB per, per job. So yeah, 125 MB. Yes. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. How do we do that? Uh, master and child, in that case, you kind of upload your master and then you do a child, because bulk API is not meant to do what composite API is doing. Composite API and bulk API are very different. So the use cases are very different. Bulk API is really used for you to import data. It's really a data ingestion to set up your org. But whereas Composite is really used to help you orchestrate your REST request separately. So it's, it's a different use case. Uh, 40, oh, right now we don't, uh, that, exactly. We, right now we have made a conscious decision not to support content yet, but over time it may be added to it. For right now it's just records. We want to do that. Yes, 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 yes. No, we, we, yeah, we are, we are aware of that. It's like, we, the reason is that like, when you do content versions, there's a little more processing involved on our end. So we need to figure out how to kind of break up zip files so that we can bash them properly. Yeah. So that's our problem. I think I think composite would be a, is, would be a good choice for you to consider in that point. Including for the file attachment? Uh, yes, I think so because you would you should be able to upload all of that as one request body. Okay. Because it's like around 40 records. I think if if composite supports, I think 200 records overall in its body, I, and and it's tree included. So you should be able to do that. So would that be Yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah, you should be able to do that. I've not tried it, but yeah. Right. Cool. Uh, I guess unless you got any other questions, I think yeah, we're we're good here. So, right. Thank you so much. Thank you.